Welcome back to the channel and welcome to day seven of our Car Care Tech Week. Today we're going to cover the tools and accessories that you need to get the results like the pros, including the chemicals that we want to use. Chemicals, wow. And episode seven already. Yes. Wow. Episode one seemed like it was just yesterday. It was so, so far away, all of the cleaning that we had to do. Seemed like yesterday, yeah. and the cleaning was so far away. Mm -hmm. See what I did there? Did you get it? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's kind of like I the eight it. days a week thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Eight days a week. I, I'm following the whole Beatles uh, yeah. theme that I, I probably have no one to blame but myself. Yeah. So uh, I think you could blame the Beatles because they're so damn popular. They're so awesome. Yeah, and they, they made so many songs that we could draw upon, but uh, I, I think... I'm going to blame me because I've clearly been a bad influence on you. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's what mom always said. What? Really? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. I'm just messing. <laughs> oh, phew, I always thought she liked me. <laughs> yeah, she does. She does. <laughs> Uh, you know, we should probably stop planning around because uh, you've got a car to get into. Yeah. Now it's clean. Right. You know, a clean car. A clean car. Because... Yep. Not to let the cat out of the bag, but we've actually finished everything, but we're recording some of the some of the work yeah. after after the fact. Yeah. And now I gotta jump in this car and avoid the urge of grabbing some greasy micro <laughs> greasy McDonald's fries and yes. just splar oh, splattering yeah. them all over the car. I think looking around the car, you're not gonna wanna spoil the results no. that you have. And I'll keep I have it a clean feeling, for a little while. I have a feeling there is a high probability that you could get pulled over for drunk driving on the way back because I think you're going to be like swerving to avoid every bug. Hold on. Oh, what are you doing? I got an idea. Yeah. What the hell? Speed! Speed! Speed to the car! Speed everywhere! Oh, on yeah, the right. on the road, yeah. right? Yeah. Because. We debugged your car. We got it all spit shined and everything. Yeah. So uh, why don't we go ahead and let some of the chemicals we use be introduced in the video. So we, uh, as we were using various products, we're actually taking time to introduce what they were, how to use them, yeah. uh, some little clips. I think that's probably the best use of our time. I mean, we could talk in the studio about all those things yeah. for hours, right? I mean, if you watch any of our episodes, one thing you know we can do, talk. Oh yeah, because he never talks. Bruce and Keith here. Let's uh, talk about the uh, Greenworks 2300 Pro uh, pressure washer. So uh, one of the things that uh, we talked about is making life easier for yourself. So Keith, uh, I think you've probably seen this type of, of hose before, oh, right? Yeah. You know, the, the real flexible. This comes in super handy. Uh, it's lightweight. Uh, easy to move around, but one of the things that uh, we're going to do for our hoses, and that's both the uh, supply and the hose for the sprayer arm, is we're throwing the quick connects on here so that uh, we can quickly get our uh, hoses connected to the uh, both to the power washer, the pressure washer itself, and the water supply line. So we'll stretch stretch this out, and then also we've added. Uh, quick connect on the hose uh, for both the sprayer and the connection to the uh, power washer itself. Okay, here's the uh, compressor side of the uh, hose connection for the sprayer. Normally these just have the twist connect. That takes a little bit of extra time. What's nice about using the quick connect, and I'll turn this here so you can see this maybe just a little bit, is we can just open this collar, push that back, slide that back on, make sure it snaps into place. And now uh, we don't have to twist that on. Same thing with the pressure washer arm or the wand. Um, and I've actually added another piece where we've got a swivel. So what this allows us to do is help keep our hose from tangling up. So we'll just grab this, throw that quick connect on, and boom, if we want to change attachments, we have it right there. We also talked about the sprayer uh, selector. And so we've got the various degrees or how intense the spray is. So this is a zero degree. Uh, we've got a soap setting. We've got 15 degrees, 
25 and 40. A uh, ceramic product. He's holding that. So, yep. Pete, why don't you talk about that? Yep. Griot's Garage or Griot's, Griot's Garage. And it's a ceramic three in one wax. That's what we're going to use today. And I'm shaking it. Appropriately. Yeah, it's, it, uh, they want it shaken, not stirred. Yes. So, uh, and then uh, as a maintenance uh, product, uh, this, is, this is actually not a silicon uh, ceramic uh, coating, right? This is one where it's designed to use in between uh, washes and coatings. So if you've done a, a really nice coating like our, our uh, Griots that we just talked about and you do some wash maintenance washes along the way and you want to, you know, give it a, a kind of a top coating, if you will, to help keep uh, that protection lasting. That's what uh, the Meguiar's is for. Um, I actually meant to have two competing products, but accidentally got the detailer instead of the actual coating. So probably a word of warning to our viewers, right? Yeah, it's amazingly amazing how microscopically positioned some of these products are. Like this is the ceramic wax. That's the thing that goes between ceramic waxes. Whatever. Yeah. All we know is that this Griot's Garage creates a superior hydrophobic water beating capability with extreme durability and intense gloss. Yes. So I recommend, well, we'll see after we use yeah. it, but uh, go for things that are superior, extreme, and intense. Right, so uh, as you can see, Keith is spraying on the product, and the idea is you spray it on in a very small area. We're doing a little bit larger than you should do if you're working alone. But spray it on a small area. Work it in so it's no longer streaking, and then once you see that it's no longer streaking, then you buff it. You can either use the, the backside of the towel as they recommend, or we're actually using a separate towel for buffing the finish. And really, it's easy as that. Uh, the biggest thing you want to avoid is trying to be in too much of a hurry and try and work, especially if you're alone, work too large an area at one time. You're going to end up with streaks with your finish and uh, then you're gonna have to work those out. And then uh, on your towel that you're applying with, if that becomes saturated, or basically the entire thing is uh, filled with the product, then uh, you're gonna wanna switch to a new towel, which mine is getting to the point where I'm gonna wanna switch here pretty soon. Same thing, uh, if you've been buffing for a while with the same cloth, then you may want to uh, you know, trade that out as well. I'm going to take my buff cloth, turn it into my applier application mm -hmm. cloth application. after, that's exactly and, then, what I just did. and then once that's filled, then I'll put that in and then do the same thing over again. All right. Yeah, I thought it would be a good moment to get our eyeballs on this bucket from Chemical Guys and talk about it a little bit. It's not that much different than any other bucket you might buy, although I think the dimensions are likely to be different. It specifically fits this thing. I'll bring this up to the camera. Hopefully it'll focus. So you can kind of see it's got some holes on one side and it has some tall legs to pull it up from the bottom of the bucket and it has these cones. So it's pretty good. It'll actually allow debris when you're using the bucket to fall through those holes and into the water below uh, and keep the water that you're washing with completely clean. And also it's a nice little scrubbing surface for whatever you know, wash mitt or sponge that you're using. It's, it is interesting that <clears throat> You know, you buy this bucket, it's good that it's translucent. It does fit perfectly in this bucket. If you have some Lowe's buckets or a, a bucket of baseballs from Dick's that you're trying to reuse, it's probably not going to work. But we like the bucket. All right, so step one, we got to focus on these bugs that are stuck to the front of my car driving through Missouri. And uh, step one is to actually just get it wet. So I'm going to use the, the power washer here on a 15 degree setting and then we'll use some chemicals after that. And then I'm gonna have him go ahead and come in now because I think he's got the spray. The 3D product that we're using is a uh, concentrate. So we've mixed this up. I believe it's a 10 to one concentration. And uh, we'll also have a link to these bottles. These bottles are, are super handy for when you have concentrate and you need to uh, mix them up into uh, the diluted form and you wanna be able to spray that product on. Uh, these bottles come in super handy. So Keith's gonna just uh, spray that on there, we'll probably speed this process up. I'll stop talking and let him spray, and then uh, we'll speed this up for you. Your car for you, if you want to switch that around. So again, now we we've let that dwell for just a few minutes, and we're gonna.
go ahead and hit this nice and hard. I'm using the 15 degree, again, because I'm trying to get any of those remnants uh, off between the, the chemical treatment and the mechanical treatment we're giving it. Hopefully we're getting almost all that bug residue taken care of. Now, if you don't get it the first time around, you can do another coating of the same, same juice after you've rinsed it off so you can kind of evaluate if that first treatment is enough to remove all the bug residue or not. And then you may end up finding uh, stuff on the car, some residue, that uh, isn't bug, but maybe could be tar or other contaminants. This uh, probably isn't going to take that off, so we'll focus on what we can tell as bugs, and then if we do have anything, see a lot, that juice really hit that area that I've been on uh, pretty hard with the mechanical. And now, look, it's taking a lot of that bug residue right off, uh, having letting that, that product dwell on the bug stuff. And I think we might hit this uh, one more time, Keith, just to make sure we get all those bugs taken care of. If you're not quite to the point where you're able to do a completely touch of slosh, the next best thing is to make sure that you have a really high quality microfiber sponge uh, or mitt. So in my case, I prefer the, the uh, sponges as opposed to a mitt. Now this does have a uh, strap on the back of the uh, microfiber sponge that you can slide your hand through and keep it from falling down and, and hitting the ground. Because that's one thing that you want to make sure you don't do is drop your microfiber cleaning device, whether it be a mitt or a sponge, onto the ground and potentially pick up uh, dirt, stones, and other uh, contaminants that you would then bring to your car. So uh, this is a nice, uh, you know, quality uh, product, isn't terribly expensive. We'll have it linked in there, but certainly there's a lot of options out there. Just make sure that if you're using a sponge, you're using a mitt, uh, whatever it is that you choose to do, that it is a microfiber one, that you use a good technique, uh, you know, whether you're on a uh, one bucket and using a way of getting soap onto the car and that bucket is for rinse, or you're using a two bucket, one for soap, one for rinse. Uh, whatever you're doing, just make sure that you are uh, regularly getting rid of what is on this sponge, uh, cleaning it out, and making sure that you are keeping that as clean as possible because that will uh, make sure that you have the best possible result you can while you are making contact with your paint with this particular cleaning device. So I'm holding the Adams Iron Remover. So this uh, particular product you would spray onto areas like your wheels, uh, anywhere that we could potentially get iron uh, build up. And the reason I say wheels is because one of the things that you'll find is brake dust uh, does typically contain iron. And so we want to uh, help clean those surfaces up. This uh, helps break down the iron. You'll see that actually uh, respond chemically to when it comes in contact with iron. And so this isn't a bad thing to have. Uh, if you're going to skip something in terms of a cost perspective, right? One of the things you'll find is there are some products. I know the Meguiar's um, all-wheel uh, product, which uh, we also use as well. Uh, the all-wheel product, which is safe for all wheels, uh, does have an iron remover product integrated in. And so uh, that's an area where if you just buy the wheel cleaner uh, and it has that iron remover built in, you may be able to save some money and skip this particular step. But uh, it's a nice step, but I wouldn't say it's essential uh, to being able to get a good uh, clean car result. When using the foam pads for our polisher, right, if you're not using the hand polishing methods, uh, one of the things you'll find is it's good to have, one, the different types of foam pads, but two, have more than one pad of a particular color so that you can switch pads partway through the polishing process. So if you're uh, not even just, you know, for the compound versus the polish, but even when you're doing the compound, one thing that you'll find is that compound or the polish, both of them will build up over time. And we want to get uh, to a point where we no longer use that same pad for that moment. Now, the nice thing about these pads is they can be clean. So uh, this is a pack. Uh, it's a nice one. It comes with, uh, again, multiple pads. Now, if you're going to be primarily using one color, or basically these have different purposes, uh, the type of, of work that you want to do, whether you're cutting, whether you're just polishing, whether you're going to do a final buff, 
all of these pads have a specific purpose and so you'll want to make sure that you review which color you need for which part of the process you're in but once we um, are ready to change pads we can change uh, pads to a new pad and when we do so we've got a couple of products uh, that we have available so uh, first off we've got the pad cleaner. So if you've got a helper and maybe you can send them off to clean that pad, you, you can use this polishing pad cleaner along with a pad brush. And so it has uh, a brush on here designed to help you clean that pad off, get that debris removed uh, and get that wrung out. You might be able to get by with having just a couple of these. Um, the recommendation I think would be, you know, no more than half a car done with a single pad and maybe it'd be closer to three possibly four of those pads uh, of each color if you were doing say the compound stage and then when you move from the compound to the polish and you change the pad color that you'd have three to four uh, of each now if you can't do that uh, because you know they cost money and, and you want to have uh, you know a certain amount of money put into certain types of tools and not all your money sunk into the polishing pads then uh, you know you just be prepared to clean up those pads as you need to so that you can then continue on in that process and not have a pad that is completely built up with debris that uh, really needs to have that removed so that you're not you know really causing more problems than you're fixing by having a dirty pad that you're using uh, on your car's paint. Well you know I knew ahead of time that we had a lot of products in terms of the chemicals and polishes and waxes and all of those products mm -hmm. that we had a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I knew that, but you know, once you get into it, it's damn, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. like every, every molecule, every type of material in your vehicle, there's like more than one thing to do. Oh, right? yeah. There's yeah. the compound, there's the polish for the paint. Uh, and actually there's even more than that. And when you're, uh, doing the interior when you're doing the plastic there's multiple steps and multiple materials the the tires the rims mm -hmm. everything it's incredible oh i know i know i mean look at look at your leather seats you were like oh you have a cleaner for them oh and you have a conditioner for them yeah and then, and then, then like, there was the protective and then you're, you're like i have a protected like this like just did three steps three layers on just the on seats. the leather seats yeah right it's incredible <laughs> it's incredible and and so one thing that I want to, you know, maybe take a step back here and talk about is we admittedly had a lot of chemicals that we're talking about, right? Because, yep. it, and I won't say it was like in a perfect world, here's all the things you do. This is, this is kind of like, you know, if you had over years kind of built up your collection of, uh, you know, utopia of car care for a weekend warrior, right? This, that's kind of what we're looking at that yeah. we were using this, this past week. Right. But there's nothing to stop you from from going out and buying the basics, right? Getting a, a bucket or two, right? The the right car soap, uh, some good micro, you know, fiber sponges. Yeah, uh, probably and, the most important piece of equipment. Those microfiber sponges. Yeah, and, and the rags. Yeah, tons of them. Yeah. Oh yeah. We we how many times did we 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 wash? Tons of them. Probably <laughs> four times we did laundry. And all it was 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 the microfiber cloths because yeah. we just went through them like crazy. Now we were doing two cards at the same time. Yeah. yeah and yeah, and yeah. all of basically, you know, soup right. to nuts, everything that you could do to the car, we were doing. Right. Right. But don't feel compelled that if your budget doesn't permit that you have to go buy everything that we showed you. Right. Start with the basics and then over time, you know, add something new to your arsenal mm -hmm. that, that gives you some new capability of, of, you know, taking that one step further with your car care. Yeah. Yeah. And before, before I hit the road, I just, yeah. you know, want to say thanks, you know, for ha hosting me and having me here mm -hmm. back in Elkhorn, back in Nebraska. Yeah. That was, uh, it's, it's always fun to come, to come home, yeah. you know, and to see you guys and to see the family. I really appreciate it. Well, I will tell you, um, that really enhanced my experience, you know, having you here in person. I mean, it's, it's fun the way we record now and, and, uh, you know, we used to record separately and then, you know, we used to record at the same time. I mean, it's just, it's a different experience when you can be here. Uh, and, and along with car care, we did, we did a lot of other stuff. I can't believe we squeezed all the events. I mean, we saw two volleyball games, including one that my daughter was playing in. Oh yeah, uh, Tons of stuff. We saw Husker volleyball. We saw Husker uh, football. Yeah. We uh, went and watched my uh, other daughter's uh, high school band. Yeah. And some of that football game. 
Uh, and then we were up at the crack of dawn doing car care and new scripts and all that stuff. So, yeah. And we set up our fantasy football league. And we set up our fantasy football league uh, on top of it. So it was a uh, really fun-filled, packed week of, uh, <laughs> of stuff. I'm sure Keith's going to be like, okay, I'm, I'm good for a year <laughs> with, with, without having to be around Bruce and, and all of his uh, you know, little, little things. Uh, we all have our little things, right? But uh, anyway, um, that uh, is probably going to do it for our seventh of eight, eight parts, yeah. right? Yeah. It's hard, hard to believe we've already reached this point. Yeah. Uh, probably have just some, some last minute, uh, you know, housekeeping items to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you're here. Go ahead and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. If you've ever, if you're a YouTube junkie or if you just watch a lot of YouTube, have you noticed that sometimes your feed just doesn't notify you that, hey, a new episode of uh, mm -hmm. Dad's Talk Tech came out? The algorithm feeds you what it wants to feed you or what it thinks you like, mm -hmm. but you're, the bell, the bell is the way to kind of force this stuff up into your feed, if you've ever wondered. So do all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, hit the bell, subscribe, right? If you haven't subscribed, please, please uh, consider subscribing. Uh, we think we make great content. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? Prove it to us. And there's like 300 plus other people that agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, no, seriously. Um, and we do have a fantastic final episode coming up. It is very fitting that it is the finishing touches, right? So we're putting the finishing touches on the series with the finishing touches for your car. So that is going to be your tires, your glass, and getting that trim restored to, you know, kind of that factory look. And uh, not to let the cat out of the bag, but I will tell you that back cowl, I'm still, right, that that whole, like, oh, air, yeah. that air uh, piece on the back of your Camaro. Yeah, what's that called again? Uh, you had diffuser. A diffuser. The rear the, diffuser. The rear diffuser yeah. looks awesome. So Camaro's got a big butt. Yeah. And there's a big diffuser. Big, it's a big yes. plastic piece that yes. really needed it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It was, it was looking... Almost the color of his paint, which is a metallic gray, um, and it's it's supposed to be black trim. So the yeah. diffuser is black once again, more. Yes. So uh, back in black. Back in black. So once again, thanks for joining us. You'll see us on the final episode of Car Care Tech Week, episode eight, and in future episodes beyond that. All right.